and of innocent Jewish students simply because of who they are. They've called that peaceful protest. And some have even gone as far as calling for the state of Israel to be eliminated. These are words we expect from ayatollahs in Iran, not American lawmakers and not American students. So, Sam, really, I mean, how are we at this point where outright hatred, anti-Semitism, is growing to such a dangerous level in our most progressive liberal bastions like New York City? It's a great question, Rob. And these anti-Semitic mobs, I've been calling them tentifada, uh, which have spread to more than 30 campuses <laughs> across the country, uh, have evoked some of the darkest days uh, for the Jewish community since the 1930s, when Jews were harassed, intimidated, attacked, and barred from university campuses in Europe. And in 2024, it's absolutely insane that these various protesters have been documented chanting at Jewish students kill the Jews, burn Tel Aviv to the ground, go Hamas, we love you, go back to Poland, throwing up Nazi salutes, displaying Hezbollah flags. Uh, according to the ADL, 73% of college students that are Jewish have experienced or witnessed some form of anti-Semitism. And uh, just to uh, crystallize this point, these mobs are being supported and cheered on by actual terrorists, by Hamas, by the PFLP, by the genocidal uh, supreme leader of Iran. Uh, and as Drew just pointed out, the speaker and Republican members of Congress showed up with courage, with righteous moral clarity to demand uh, that the Jewish students on campus have security and safety. And of course, uh, President Biden was in New York this week up in Syracuse, but he didn't bother to stop at Columbia. So I think the clarity and the contrast here is so clear. And Jewish students, bottom line, have the right uh, to feel safe on college campuses. And if the leaders cannot provide that, they have to step aside and be replaced by those who will.